Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, here we go. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> Man, welcome, welcome, or should I say, welcome back to the Reclamation Point Podcast, man. I'm your host, Mr. Motown Lee. Ride a shotgun, pouring sweet tea ethics, Dr. Edward M. Garns Jr. <laughs> and first, let me say, you know what? <laughs> it's good to be back. Um, we took a hiatus. Um, there's reasons that we took a hiatus, but it's so good to be back. And for all the like loyal listeners, all the subscribers, like we have to say, like we apologize for you know taking this hiatus. But I think it was just it was necessary for me personally. It was necessary that um, that I take a break because you know we can't be in here talking to y'all. <laughs> about model the way you know, you know <laughs> mental health and all of this and we don't have it together because then we'd be hypocrites you know what i mean so um i talk to my guy all the time man but you know us here talking to y'all um we missed y'all man and you know and, and we have heard you <laughs> <laughs> We have been inundated. Hey, right. We need an episode. <laughs> right. <laughs> they they they've been asking. First of all, man, Ed, how you been, bro? How you? I've been good, you know. Uh oh. That was you a loaded. Me? That was a loaded good. Yeah, I can't even. Talking, I can't right? even front. I've, I've been good. <laughs> you know I've been through hell and back. Okay, <laughs> let's just be real. I've been through hell and back. Still grieving. Lost my uncle a few days ago. So yeah, life been lifing, man. I know, man, and it's just crazy because, you know, with everything this that has like been going on, I literally um, during that time it was like in a in a what was it a like ten day span? I literally lost three good three friends. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and it was just all of a sudden, and I think it really bothered me because um, seemingly. Um, healthy black men um and we're all around the same age, age yeah. and so that happening affected me like in a way you know i'm like all right keep pushing all right you know this that and the other but subconsciously i was like you know i'm coming on up on this monumental age mm -hmm. you know um birthday coming up big six oh Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No. <laughs> Shout out to the homies, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> that are six old. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not turning uh, six I'm just messing, man. He's putting years on me now. <laughs> um, but nah, man, that, it, 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 it was, it was rocking with me, man. It was, it was, it was hitting me. You know what I'm saying? It was hitting me. Like, um, first off, it's like, all right, even coming up on this age, right? Mm hmm uh I was dealing with um think I think you coined it or was it like somebody told me this and it was like man the survivor's remorse or whatever and I'm looking at like through back through all through these years and um past a the, it was almost a, a guilt or almost a disbelief that I'm actually like turning this actual age yeah yeah you know what i mean like not because like oh man you're an old man or anything but i never like growing up like i've never seen myself being like this big age or being mm -hmm. this adult or this person you know what i mean i um i always um lived knowing that i was like all right i'm on borrowed time you know what I mean? Like once I get past this age, everything else is borrowed. Cause I know, and I had accepted that. You know what I mean? I yeah. accepted it in life, um, subconsciously. I didn't. The way I moved, um, as far as like, you know, the attachment, the relationships, and not having kids and everything. Mm -hmm. Subconsciously, it 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 was these thoughts that. I ain't gonna be around to raise them. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And I don't want to leave nobody raising kids without me being. It was just, it's just crazy. Survivor's remorse, guilt, and then also, I'm sure losing three brothers. You start thinking about your own mortality. Right. So that's a that's a combo. You know. So, um, 
everyone was like, you turn to the stage, like you're doing this big celebration, do it, do it, you gotta. And I was like, nah, I don't even want to celebrate it, right? <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do, you know, I ain't trying to celebrate it. I just want to just be like any other birthday, whatever. And now I realize, like, you know what? You got to celebrate this. Got to. You know what I mean? So, Monumental. Like, shout out to to all um, my friends, uh, my, my, my family. I call my friends my family. Like, shout out to them for pushing me. Um, to to celebrate, um, shout out to to therapy for allowing me like the channel to open up and be able to have these conversations, and shout out to you know what I mean my brother for now us being in front of cameras and talking to millions of people about these issues yep. because I felt like you know um, I never feel like I never opened up you know as much as I do now. Yeah. Um, because I was just, you know, just removing the mask. Uh-huh. Um, and with those thoughts, I have to say, like, I also have to apologize to a lot of people, you know, um, because subconsciously they looked in, they looked f- uh, for a future in me that I ain't seeing myself. Mm. And so because they saw a future in me and saw these things, I pushed them away. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, That's uh, heavy, man. Uh, um, and so I made these, um, there was these excuses or whatever it was to end the relationship or push them back because they were getting too, too close. close. Um, and um, because of that, you know, I, I've, you, you know, you lose, you, know, you you lose valuable people by not knowing what's going on with you and being able to communicate, you know, um, to communicate these things and thoughts and feelings. As a black man, we have pride. We have a lot of hangups. We have these things that affect us, Yeah, you know. But um, I'm thankful that I'm now able to, you know, communicate. And I'm now able to, you know, express and now able to see like myself being like this, you know what I mean, old dude, like chilling, doing whatever it is to be, you know, doing. The, the elder statesman. Know. Yeah. But I, I, I see the growth though, because the difference is, um, you know, we, we can't preach to the choir about <laughs> nothing is more important <laughs> than your mental health and, and not take a break, but you knowing that you needed to shut it down and then me having enough sense to provide you grace and space, I think we're modeling exactly what we talked about. Right. Because we could have pushed through and kept going and been like, hey, guys, black men in mental health. But I, that's the growth that I see is knowing that you got to unplug from the matrix and take care of yourself. Man. And, 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 and me not putting pressure on you to, you know, it's bigger than the show. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, grace and space. And, it, and it's just crazy because... I, 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 want, I don't want to use the term crazy because, you know, but it's just wild that, you know, our platform and, and we started this platform about about Ed and I, like, you know what I mean? The him and I, you know what I mean? Like Outcast album, right? Um, having conversations and opening up and exposing other black men, but so many other people have been exposed and have like learned yes. so much. Um, I was talking to, um, it's funny because I was talking to somebody who was in my life, you know, growing up and that person, um, I had pushed that person away or whatever. Um, that p- one of the people that got too close and um, she said to me, she was like, you know, we were talking and we were shooting the breeze, we are talking about things. Um, I've known this person probably, you know, over 30 years now, right? Uh, well, yeah, about 30 years. Um, she said to me, she said, oh, I saw your show. Like, I've seen episodes of your show. And she was like, and I was like, what you think? So I'm thinking she's going to like be like, oh, that ain't Negro, that Like, nigga, please. Yo, you know, little please. show. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, 
I am thankful that you actually doing the show because it opened my eyes and explained so many things about you. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I just thought you was crazy. And I was like, what? She was like, oh no, you was crazy. You know what I mean? And in, in that week span, I literally had two people close to me was like, man, I thought you was going crazy. Like, I was just crazy. And you did, it, it was never an explanation yeah. or understanding on why you did or these choices and why you did the things you did. But because of the reclamation point, like, now people can see uh, myself and then themselves because they go through our life experiences and... You know, I'm sitting here with a brother of mine who we talk about life experiences, but he happened to be a professional. So <laughs> I am not, I'm just here expressing how I am personally and these these things and throwing them out there. Don't and, di- and, and, don't and, and discount then, your wisdom. Then, I'm not gonna you allow. Got, I'm then, not gonna allow you to do that on this show. No you I'm have saying. wisdom, so and don't then, discount it. And then, and then you got you know what I'm saying, Sammy Brosa, knocking them out the park. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you got him, knock you know, just knocking them out the park and giving you know medical references and clinical references and things that so people will have. This understanding, man. So I, I am thankful um, for this platform. I'm thankful for Ed. I'm, I'm thankful for therapy. And I'm just thankful, you know, that we're able to help others. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's it's funny, man. Both of us have gotten some good therapy in um, because of the stuff that we've been going through. Yeah. Most of my stuff has been, been grief as well, just different levels of grief, you know, yeah. friends and family and so I had some complicated grief as well. So, I mean, that's the point of the show. We ha- we we actually practice what we preach, mm-hmm. you know. So the hiatus was not, hey, we don't want to see y'all no more. But you know, we have to be uh, mentally whole and well as well. So right, this is the practice what you preach. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Outfit here. So and so you know, um, before we do anything else, I I want to say. Um, Thoughts and prayers and and just support continue to go out to um, my boy Marcelino King, his family. Um, actually, his birthday was two days ago. Mm. So love you, Marcelino. I'm always miss you. Um, Clay Evans um, and everybody knew Clay. Clay was you know so all the friends, all all family. Um, Clay, you know uh, Mike Giddy Wine. Uh, and uh, and then you know my my part in the land. So, um, with that being said, um, and with that, why we've been MIA? Yeah, we have to talk about some things that's going on <laughs> right, right on now. time. Right on time. The fact that we actually are back a day after <laughs> the city was shut down. Yeah. Um, off a brother, and I, I won't say his name because I don't even remember his name. But in Atlanta, um, there was there's a young brother, 24 years old, um, who um was suffering from uh mental health illness. Um, his mother, he su- he was suffering so much that his mother actually took him to the hospital to get treatment. Um, there's conflicting stories that they did either denied the treatment that she asked for or they gave him wrong treatment or whatever it was. This brother became irate and he went on a shooting spree. He reacted. Um, his brother had the city shut down. down. Um and it is there's so many ways I, I, I said this because not only did he have it shut down and it was in search for him, but I didn't really, you know, because of what happened, um and and clearly it was a mental health issue, I didn't want them to kill the brother. But it has effect it had effect on so many different things because when we talk about mental health, but we also talk about 
vigilantes in the racist system and how people are viewed, right? Mm -hmm. So him being a black man, I really literally made a post like call to action, hey brothers, if you look like this, this isn't the game. If you look a certain way, stay indoors for a while until they yeah. catch this brother. And it's a shame you had to give that public service announcement, but it was real. Because we know, um, and this isn't no slack, a slack against law enforcement because I truly believe that um, living in a lot of, you know, being in a lot of different cities, hearing the complaints and everything, I truly believe, shout out to um, the police, the, the APD and the police in Atlanta and greater Atlanta area because I truly, there's always going to be incidents to happen, um, but I don't believe, like, that we have the kind of like racial issues divide with the police and black people because I see a lot of black police. I see a lot of, you know, people who, you know, the, you know, us being a black city, you you have you have economical differences and you're gonna have racism, but I don't see it with the police. So I don't so us so I don't see it oh, there's always gonna be that, but I don't see it as much as other people. So I just wanted to to put that in the context of when I say dangerous for other black men until he was caught, uh -huh. that I'm not talking about we worried about the police. Because I've saw I seen police pull people. I actually saw a clip of one brother. He got the drinking and stuff after. But that brother did. He I did look been, like him. He did saying? look like him. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> he kept getting, he, and he had on a hoodie and he everything. Had a hoodie and everything. Like, he like, why y'all sweating me? I'm looking at him like, bro, if I would have saw him, yeah. I would have been like, I was like, just when hoodies made a comeback where we could almost get away with wearing them, now, <laughs> now we shut down again. You know so, so, so all the other brothers, except that one, like, brother, I don't know if you you paying attention, you watching this, but you look like dude. You know what I'm saying? So I understand. So the police, I seen, like, a couple of police asking for his ID and whatever. Yep. And, you know, I understand that he did look like the brother and he fit the description he had on hoodie. But then I also seen other people. But I really, it wasn't necessarily law enforcement. We also live in a open carry. So you're going to have vigilantes who do some things out of fear, right? And I don't want that anyone, that brother issue and what he was facing, what he did to affect other people, right? But let's get into, you know, who is like, it? because it's so many layers yeah, to what the, I was about to say know, this is an onion clearly it was mental health but it could be but we face things because of like the PTSD right mm -hmm. the PTSD being black man in America apparently he was uh, I think he, they were saying he was in the um, services mm -hmm. at one point Coast in time Guard. I think he was in yeah Coast Guard um, oh National Guard I think Coast Guard, National Guard, but he was in he was in yeah. some form of, of armed services. Right. And so even everyday brothers, you know, growing up, we live with some sort of PCSC or some sort of like things that affect our mental health, right? That needs to be addressed because we we sit here and talk about, you know, um black on black crime and all these things and you know what I mean, that's a that that that's a mental illness. A mental illness is black and black, like black and black, like crime. If you, when I say, I mean, like in it, you're gonna have some things, people to do certain things. But if you're like you consciously will shoot a, another black person before anybody mm -hmm. else, and I'm not saying you should go do anything to anybody else, but I'm saying a lot of times we view the self hate that we have amongst each yep. other. Uh -huh. It is easy for us to kill each other than it is anybody else, even if that person is like doing us wrong and it was a situation we still so let's get into that who where you want me to start because i can go several places <laughs> um let, let's let's talk about i guess the let's talk about black like hit because we've 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 addressed uh ptsd before um, yeah and if you didn't see that episode um Look it up, Reclamation Point PTSD episode. Um, but let's talk, you know, 
mental health and as it pertains to what causes a or or in, in the mental mental health why does it turn what is what is when does it become like violent and, and, and you know what this is this is actually not to round one but you and i had a conversation mm-hmm. about a uh, a young boy a child oh and, yeah, yeah and and how you as a professional saw um some traits of, yeah uh-huh. you know, so pr- let's, let's propensity start there. for yeah. violence mm-hmm. so um so to give some context, me and Motown actually before this happened, um, there was it's a young person in my village that is struggling with some things that have shown telltale signs that have a propensity for violence. And so um, some of the telltale signs is just not only the inability to emotionally regulate, that means keep your emotions in check, but doing small things, little small acts like fighting or punching people unsolicited. So this person was displaying what I told Motown. This is the behavior of someone that goes on to do mass shooting. So that's the context of that person. But in this particular instance, instance with Brother Patterson, um, the the person, the alleged gunman from mm, yesterday. That's a, okay, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, Brother Patterson. Um, the first thing I was saying. And I was sad because we have a podcast. I post about this almost daily or weekly about the necessity to take black men's mental health seriously. But unfortunately, it takes tragedy for people to rewind the tapes and say, oh, that's why that's why they're doing the podcast on black <laughs> mental health. That's why his dissertation and, and thesis is, is on black men and mental health, because the best solution is, is to be proactive. Mm-hmm. It's little we can do for this brother now, right? Because it has to be a proactive stance. But number one, I was sad. You know, I had that feeling of dread because it's other brothers that's going to be affected when they were looking for him. I was like, man, they're going to lock down every light-skinned brother with a be here mm-hmm. in Atlanta. So I had that fear. I didn't even do it, and I felt fear and dread. Right. So that was the first thing. But but as the story came out, the first thing I told someone that asked me what I felt, I said he's probably a veteran, and it's probably some systematic issues. What we fail to understand about armed services is that you are trained to do traumatic things that the average person can't even reconcile. So if you're constantly exposed to traumas, that's why a lot of people in armed services have PTSD. The other thing that I thought about, here's a black mom who said, my son is having a mental health crisis, went to get help, and it still happened. That's what I thought about. Like, she did the right thing. I'm going to try to manage this. <laughs> My son is struggling. I'm going to get him help. But, you know, sometimes that trigger, we never know when someone is like a, like a like like ticking on the inside. So those are all the things that I thought about. But it says something when most people that uh, have a propensity for violence are to be triggered for violence have served in our military. So, ding, that I'll tell mm-hmm. us, that I'll tell us there's something, something going on with that, right? And so, um, that's why we have to be proactive with black men's mental health because the reason why we call it reclamation point, we have to reclaim our dignity every day. So, these small indignities that we suffer from systematic racism, um, they have an impact. They have a deep impact. And so, what we are seeing is the cumulative lifespan impact of a brother dealing with a system that is forecasting his demise. Mm. And it's and it's crazy that you said that because why does why did I when you saw the shooting I'm seeing this why did the minute it was like a black man I was wow that's more frustrated like damn black man. I thought he was going to die. I said, oh, he, he, they're going to kill him. That, that's what I thought. Like, brother, oh, he's out of here. Because we don't get apprehended. But I'm like, dang, man, the fact that we actually, that I was like, 
damn, it's a brother. And I was more upset that it was a brother than exactly the shooter. <laughs> that is something, something is Cause like nobody, something nobody, cause we, we have that burden of representation where we know that other black people will be impacted and judged by this one decision. White brothers and sisters don't have that. True. They don't have that burden that we have. And so, you know, um, sh- um, my thoughts, you know, to the family, um, the, the families that was involved, to the to to the people at Northside Hospital and all the people that um, were traumatically like affected by this shooting, uh, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to them people. Um, credit to um, law enforcement for doing an amazing job and apprehending this brother, you know, um, alive, you know. <laughs> Um, and nobody else being hurt. Um, and then, so I don't want to tiptoe past, uh, something you said, um, um, as pertains, um, the mental health and, and, and the, the kid, the child, um, the child acting out and what you saw, um, because, when you talk about like black people in our in our community, um, just the fact that you saw it and you felt like it had to be addressed, mm-hmm. you know, um, I just I, first of all I commend that and love that because it shows that sense of like a community. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. That we have lost because it takes a nation um, and a community to raise just one child Mm -hmm. but and but you don't know what one child that one child who that one child is so let's all focus on raising them all right um i am uh, a component uh, of you know from for any of my friends can tell you here's one who has a child he can tell you that listen man i will full on take the responsibility of a, a adopted godfather uncle i am going to be always concerned about your children yep. their health and well-being i am it is there's not a friend that i have that that i talk to they can tell you that, that that'd be the first thing I, I might even ask about i might even ask about them yeah I'm gonna ask about to make sure. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, well, <laughs> you know I'm saying? <laughs> I'm gonna make sure the kids gonna be straight. Yes, sir. You know, um, and, and I, I'm, I'm thankful for, you know, my mother for instilling that in me. But like, let's let's talk about that because what why the, did, co- the community, yeah, like, like, and and why we see things. And, and, and when did, like, how do we go or get back? Or it, or is it the community or other people's responsibility to address certain things, you, to police these things and art, you know, and children and other people's children? Because I think that, you know, for me personally, listen, man, I don't, you know, whether it's a, you know, behavioral, uh, financial, there's something in us that we have to be like, all right, let me help you and pick up the slack or whatever. Yeah, so so first we have to understand that that healing in the black community has to be a community practice. Mm-hmm. And so what you're speaking to is a change in values, right? So one of our psychological strengths that we have in as black people is that connectedness to others, that spirit of community that we are, uh, all of us have to look out for all of us, right? Mm-hmm. What has happened, especially here for black folks in America, money corrupts values, all right? So once black people start to achieve money post-integration or get close as whiteness as you can get to, thinking that the whiteness Kool-Aid tastes better, we also sacrifice some very fundamental black principles and and healing as community practice is something that Mm. we have abandoned that we have to get back to. So what that looks like in action is that we are responsible for the needs of each other. And one of the needs that we neglect 
we throw money at issues now when we need to be throwing <laughs> mental health strategies. Right. All right. So right. we we only throw money at issues now. So so how what that looks like is that we have to care and and see our see the see our own humanity reflected in other black people. That has to become a value. When you do that, then everything else comes out of that. Like anything that is not attached to love is not going to work in the black mm -hmm. community. If you look at the Panthers program, it was some basic fundamental things like food, clothes, and shelter. But what they were saying implicitly was that we're going to help with the, doing, doing food, clothes, and shelter is also going to help with psychological development. So people grow up affirmed, right? Because there's two things that everyone wants, especially black people. They want help, whether they ask for it or not, and they want their humanity affirmed and have human connection with other people. So that human connection is how we get to the healing. Mm. And so, and so, how it relates to that child and this brother that somewhere along the lines, healing as community practice has some kind of failure or fissure. Because any black mom that takes you to the hospital, I already know her background. <laughs> she probably been fighting for years to right. get this brother some help. So, But that's mm -hmm. what it looks like in action is that getting the necessary resources. But, but also, if we're going to throw money at stuff, mental health is severely underfunded. Yep. It's not enough black men in psychology because the discipline of psychology is so racist, they don't want us in it. And then a lot of people don't have the fortitude to stick it out like I did because I almost quit. You saw the stuff I went through. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to see change, throw some money at mental health issues and make training accessible to black clinicians uh, more accessible. That means scholarships, <laughs> paying, you know, pay for some schooling. <laughs> That's what we need if we're going to throw some money, throw some scholarships and some funding so we can have people that are trained in black, well, uh, black ways of being, being the people doing the psychological work with our people. Mm. I think that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a major issue that we have because within, within us, we, we've so caught up in the pursuit of... Um, financial stability or, or financial security that we forget about certain things like you know our parents they work 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 and they're trying to get this and trying to get that so I can give my kids this but you forget about the essentials yes right you know what I'm saying people then oh like clothes on your back and shoes are essential they are right but but Jordan's Chanel Louis but there aren't like those things aren't right Shoes, clothes, but then also, my 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 logic and my approach to to raising kids um, would be is is um, you have to prepare your children with the tools of surviving in this world without you, uh -huh. right? Um, so. Surviving in this world does not mean that, all right, I'm going to leave him a million dollars, right? Because that doesn't guarantee when someone else comes and he has this knowledge of, like, to turn away from drugs or mm -hmm. those bad influences or people, you know, um, stealing his money, anything. It still does not say that, okay, he knows how to love. He or she, they know how to love. They know what it is to be loved. They know what it is to cook and provide for themselves. They know what it is, you know, about hard work. They know what it is about values and, and these things. We are forgetting and missing these things because we are in the pursuit of financial happiness. Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and now you have a generation and you see these kids – they're, this is their thing. They think, okay, oh, you know, this is what's important. So, you know, I'm just, um, and we're not spending this time with them teaching these things. Yeah. Shout out to the parents that are, you know what I mean, and that they're, they're actually there and they're showing them how to be loved. Young, showing young women uh, 
what it is to 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 be loved to you know by you know a man and and, and a woman um showing young boys that you know you know it's okay to coddle but you know what i mean sometimes you have to be gotta lay, the, have lay, to, lay down the law you know because that's just what it is right um and so you know and shout out to the the people and parents and those who are paying attention because there's a lot of crying for help we see in chat like depression and, and 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 suicide and everything going up at alarming rates among amongst children it's a it's you know a I mean? it's a complicated and simple reason why like we're we're looking at the end result like we're looking at all these behaviors like oh god the kids crazy no the kids are not crazy we are expecting behavioral change without a value shift you know what I'm saying? So, you know, in the psych world, we, we would use words like we need to undergo cognitive restructuring. But to put it in red Kool-Aid terms, because our value system and our core beliefs in the black community have changed, so has the behavior followed. Right. So we can't expect behavior to change unless we're willing to change some core beliefs. So our core belief right now is money over everything. Mm -hmm. Money even over black folks. I will kill, steal whatever I have to do for the money, right? So what are the behaviors? People are killing, stealing, and doing anything for the money. Mm -hmm. Notice when our core beliefs were power to the people, you know, uh, activism and those things, look at the behaviors. We, we protest effectively. We work together effectively. We had black businesses. We supported them because our core value system was such that those things were important. The value system that we have embraced, embraced is Eurocentric. Any mm -hmm. any people that invest in the value system of another person or another group of people is destined to fail. We have to remember that we have to develop black value systems that put community development, mental health, and all of these things as a priority for our own people. You have to. Because, I mean, just like the clip, I sent Ed this clip. I don't know, was it last night or was last it last night? I sent Ed this clip. I'm, I'm online, and I see this clip, and this had to be, I mean, you see a lot of disheartening things, but to see this. There's a clip going around. Um, there's a person interviewing these African-American high school girls, and she asked them, what would you rather have? What would you rather date? Would you rather have a fat boyfriend? This is her words, not mine. Yes, you know, I'm roundly blessed uh, in that area. <laughs> um, would you rather have a fat or overweight boyfriend or an abusive boyfriend? Yeah. And all of them young girls said they would rather have. <laughs> an abusive boyfriend. Yeah. And I saw that and I'm like, how do we get there? Clearly, just lack lack of fathers right there. There's, there's no way no real man could be in the, in that family, right? In the, in, in, in the home of them young girls. Secondly, yeah, how did we get here? Society has really... I, I give you I give you one example that we have right in front of us of how we got there. When I talked about core beliefs, every every media outlet, every person that shares this craziness between uh, brother Blueface and Sister Rock, right? How many times have we put con consist consistently put out this and gave credence to this abusive relationship? Unquestioned. We think it's a joke, right? <laughs> How nice. many times have you seen it? You can you can type in Blueface and you will see videos of him disrespecting Sister Rock, talking about abuse, and it has gone unchecked. Mm. Nobody has said, hey, we gonna stop promoting this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you have young impressionable women. Seeing constant abuse, constant degradation, 
constant disrespect for their own humanity as women, and we wonder why young people would rather have an abusive boyfriend. Mm. I didn't even look at you know what? I've totally forgot it. I didn't even think look about at that. that. It, has there ever been a story that says we are contributing to the death of not only Blueface, but the death of our sister Rock? Has there been any stories talking about the psychological turmoil and trauma that she has to have gone through to accept this abuse and the psychological trauma that Blueface has gone through in order to be the perpetrator? Mm. It's predatory behavior. But if we have a community value, we would check it. So it it makes sense to me in this in this media world where the kids are influenced by that that they think it's cool to get beat up. <laughs> that is be first of all, just I am so protective in how I am as just as a black man. I'm just not going right, and I never could see myself being like abusive. Um, to a woman in shorts, and, I, and, and it's not okay, right? It's never okay. Y'all call me a sucker, you can call me whatever. Like, nah, man, you a sucker. Like, you putting hands on a woman and being like, over But where did that value system for you come from? And, yeah, it came from, you know, and, and but it's just crazy because I'm just like, you know, it, it's it's accepted and it's okay and to see young girls think like this yeah and you put it in perspective with blue face and i also seen you know that's just that's just I, a great read, example I, that everybody knows it's several examples you know, i can get <laughs> i read i read this thing is person this girl was talking about um diddy and uh and and i don't know the girl's name Cresha. and it was like oh yeah you know he putting her in circles and i'm like but you know According to her, like you know, he does things that she don't like, which is essentially like abuse. In in that, yeah. To, but it's okay because I'm putting you in these rooms and these circles. It's no, not it's, okay. It's okay because he has money. But you. Have, That's why people right. think it's okay. And we let, have to let me abuse somebody. I'm going to jail. Okay, <laughs> I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> right. And so, so if if we can say anything to to young kids and young adults to the sisters and even to some of the brothers is being abused you know and i mean whoever like it is not okay to deal with to 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 be mm-hmm. in that position um what's your boy's name who had all the money in the world and he ended up killing when he killed his wife he killed somebody he was known to be abusive and then he ended up Moving overseas to think Roman, what is it, Roman Polanski? Polanski, yeah. I'm about to say, you talking about yeah. the Polanski, bro. You know, um, and you see these things, um, you know, hey, whether you feel like OJ did it or not, people say OJ was, you know what I mean, abusive and it got to the point like, it's not okay, man, like to allow somebody to abuse you and it just because of the financial or the status, like it's never okay. Because you get your head knocked off and you die, what good is that money? Yeah. And and that person can also walk away when you look at like blue face. Blue face can just be like, you know what? I'm tired of this and I'm done. What does that leave? Rock somewhere har- harmed and and just mentally in a bad place because you've allowed this abuse. By what, based on a, what a person yeah. could supply, let's, it is not okay. Let's throw some therapy. <laughs> we throwing, <laughs> we throwing money. Let's throw some therapy and some psychological resources. Exactly. At folks. And we have to, as adults and as an African American community, we have to stop saying that this is okay. We have to stop finding, like, looking at this junk like it's humor, it's entertainment. Because it is affecting our children. It is affecting our future. Our future, it is affecting our community, right? Damn about, oh, man, white folks do it too. No, 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 no. We about, it's about, about us. when we talk about Black Panthers, Black Panthers were about self-policing. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's about we're going to police our community and we're going to run the dunk dealers and all these people up off the community. We're going to police our community before we can tell somebody else, hey, don't do this in our community. Yeah. We have to police us. So we have to, you know, stop 
liking the picture or comment like, oh, but they look cute or or this is funny or this is cool. No, 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 no. And we have media, we have media outlets. We have to our our media outlets that are black owned and black controlled, we have to stop feeding into that. Yep. We have to we have to check it. It's it's just <sighs> We, we we getting there, we're taking baby steps. But after all this time in this nation, man, like some of the stuff we 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 some of the stuff it can't be baby steps. When children are saying it is better to have an abusive boyfriend mm-hmm. than an overweight boyfriend, that ain't something we take baby steps on and change. That's something we gotta be like, you know what? Let's change this now. The buck stops here. <laughs> because <laughs> We look at, like, some of these young boys, they ain't playing no games. I won't even, you know what I mean? Listen, I get into it, you know, that gas, whatever, gas station, wherever. You can have it. Oh, you got it? You got it, bro. So I know if they ain't playing no games with me or and they quick to shoot and do whatever, who's to say they won't shoot and abuse their girl? But, you know, we have, we have let – we have let sexism go unchecked for so long. Like, that's how we get predators. I mean, that's how we get R. Kelly. That's how we yep. get Bill Cosby because we have let sexism be the dirty little secret that we don't check. Yeah, we have to in our community. We have to check that. Um, and with that being said, I, th- I think that's a, a perfect place to to end this uh, or or – Kind of like wrap this episode up. I do want to. Um, I do want to shout out a resource because we are about solutions. Oh yeah, yeah. Hold, I yeah, think. I think it. especially for brothers that are that 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 are struggling with with issues of violence and and, and their violent violent proclivities. Mm-hmm. Um, you Lester Douglas and Man Stopping Violence is a good resource um, to get you some help. Mm-hmm. So Man Stopping Violence, you Lester Douglas, look them up. Um, that'll be a good resource to help you navigate through these uh, gangster proclivities that we sometimes have. Right. <laughs> so that's a good resource for the people. And for a lot of brothers um, and a lot of you know a lot of sisters, um, there is if even if you you know there's Ed and I don't have a you know hotline, but there's ways you can communicate yeah. with both of us, um, and you know. This isn't a, a judgment zone. If you reach out to me and you like, like, I need um, to, you know, holler at Ed or another therapist or what do you think, um, please reach out to me. You can email me or you can hit me on any one of the socials, um, um, Motown Lee, M-O-E-T-O-W-N-L-E-E. And you can reach um, Ed. Um, actually, I, I, I want to not just your social, but I want them to – to reach out to um, your website. And, and yeah, and so you can reach me on social at uh, all of my social is at Dr. Ed Garns. Uh, also, if you would like a, a consult, like Motown is talking about, if you want to hire me to, to, to help and be of assistance to you, uh, visit edwardgarns.com. Click on the higher ed link, <laughs> higher ed, you know. <laughs> so um, that's how you, you can reach out to us. But we are available. If we don't have the answers, we'll get you to somebody that can. <laughs> so with that being said, this has been the Reclamation Point Podcast. Man, I'm your host, Mr. Motown Lee. And riding shotgun out of tea right now, but Dr. Ed <laughs> <laughs> And And we do these episodes. We do this um out of love, we do this to help with mental health, uh, whether you're black, white, whatever you are. Um, but we're gonna focus on on our community. Um, you know, we just because we just happen to be. Damn, we black. Yeah. Damn. Did you know that? No, uh, don't rub off. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so with that being said, we're gonna close it out. Reclamation point podcast check us out thank you to 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 david thank you to you 42 studios and subscribe um like U42. like share, share. higher <laughs> we out of here d